children. I wonder what's in the box today. What have we got here? We have a book of Christmas stories. Okay, I'm going to open it and see which Christmas story. And this is the Nativity according to St. Luke. The story of Jesus' nativity is at the heart of Christmas. It is one that is known all over the world. Yet it began very quietly in a little corner of the Roman Empire in the time when Herod the Great was king of Judea. To the north of Judea is a region known as Galilee. Olives and vines grow on its hilly slopes and shepherds lead their flocks to graze the rough pasture. Among this farm country is a town named Nazareth and this perfectly ordinary place was once home to a woman named Mary. At the time, people thought of her as a perfectly ordinary young woman. The man she was planning to marry had a more remarkable background. His family could trace their roots all the way back to the greatest king the Jewish nation had ever known, King David. However, all that was centuries in the past, and indeed everyone thought of Joseph as a perfectly ordinary man the local carpenter. Then the extraordinary thing happened. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to deliver a message to Mary. It began in the customary way. Shalom, peace be with you. Then it continued. God is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary looked at the angel, her eyes betraying her disquiet. Who was it who had come from nowhere with such an unexpected message? What did it mean? Don't be afraid, Mary, said the angel. God has chosen you to bear a child, a son. He will be known as the son of the Most High God. He will be a king greater than David of long ago and his kingdom will never end. The angel spoke with great certainty. But Mary was far from convinced. She put her hands on her hips and spoke her mind. Well, that's just not going to happen, she said firmly. I'm not yet married and so I'm definitely not going to have a baby. What I have said can come true, replied the angel, because there is nothing God cannot do. Mary was still not entirely convinced, but she let her arms fall to her sides and shrugged. Hmm, well, if God wants that to happen then, let it be, she said. At that, the angel went away. Not long after, Mary found out that she was indeed pregnant. At first, the only person she dared tell was her cousin, Elizabeth. Mary knew that if anyone would understand, that person was Elizabeth, for she too was expecting a baby. It was also quite useful that Elizabeth lived some distance away. It gave Mary the chance to be far from Nazareth when, as was bound to happen, the news that she was pregnant became known and people started gossiping. The visit was all that Mary had hoped for. For one thing, Elizabeth believed Mary's story utterly and completely. She said, It's a miracle that I'm expecting a baby after so many years of being childless, so I'm already quite convinced that God can do things that others declare to be impossible. I believe the angel's words. I believe that you are blessed and I believe that your child will be blessed too. Elizabeth's encouragement made Mary sing for joy and gave her confidence for all the difficulties that might lie ahead. As it happened, the difficulties were a lot fewer than she had once feared. Joseph believed her explanation about the baby. He agreed to marry her and take care of the child as his own. So, when the Emperor Augustus ordered a census, which is a huge, dreary undertaking to collect the names of everyone in the empire whom he could force to pay taxes, Joseph made a plan. We will go to my hometown as the order requires, said Joseph to Mary, and there we will register as a family. That means we can leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem in Judea, birthplace of my famous ancestor, King David. Joseph didn't make any particular plans of where to stay. Bethlehem was his hometown, after all. There was bound to be someone who recognised him as a cousin of some sort and insist the couple come and stay. To this bay of both, however, the town had absolutely no room left for visitors. 
King David was clearly the famous ancestor of a great many people. We're not exactly being turned away, Joseph explained to Mary. It's just that the only place that is available for us is a stable. Mary sighed a little and then smiled. That's very sensible, she said. It was not unusual for animal rooms to be practically part of the house. It kept the animals safe and the house just that little bit warmer. And Mary could tell that her baby would soon be born. And indeed, the baby came that very night. Mary swaddled her son snugly with clothes and cradled him in a manger. Not far away, some shepherds were spending the night on the hillside so they could take care of their sheep. The sheep bleated sleepily from inside the stone-walled fold and the shepherds grumbled vaguely about this and that, the arrogance of occupying Roman troops, the possibility of taxes going up and the likelihood of the local tax collector being a rogue who was overcharging. All at once, the dark of night turned into a dome of gold, more breathtaking than dawn. An angel stood in front of them, shining with all the glory of heaven. Don't be afraid, said the angel. I bring good news for you, for your people, for all people everywhere. Tonight, in Bethlehem, a new king has been born. He is God's chosen king, the Messiah, the Christ, and he will save you from all your troubles. What on earth? began one of the shepherds. But his companion nudged him to be quiet. I know you're wondering about me, said the angel, but I can give you proof. If you go to Bethlehem, you will find the newborn king. He's wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great crowd of angels appeared and the air was filled with singing. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. The shepherds stood open-mouthed. It was as if the dark curtain of the night sky had been swept away and they could see straight into heaven. Then the darkness swung back and all was quiet. Well, said one of the shepherds, did we all hear the same thing? asked another. Some talk about a baby in a manger. Yeah, in Bethlehem. Well, I think we know where most of the mangers are. I can't think of anyone I know who was expecting a baby. They checked that the gate of the fold was safely shut before heading off up the hill to Bethlehem. Lamplight showed them that something was going on in one of the stables. There they found Joseph and Mary and saw the baby in the manger. Uh, there's a bit of a story about why we're here, they explained. You might not believe it, but we came because, well, an angel told us to come. Mary almost laughed out loud. Oh, I can believe it, she said. It's the sort of thing that happens to me. The shepherds told their news. Mary listened intently. What the angel Gabriel had said to these men reminded her of the things that Gabriel had told her. There in the manger lay God's newborn king. Thank you.